I think that law enforcement activities recently have been having an impact in the volume of DDoS attacks we're seeing. Karen, it sounds like there's a little bit of good news in the fight against DDoS. Somebody ended up with a pretty decent uh, prison term as a result of some DDoS activity. Yeah, I was really surprised to find that this guy in New Mexico actually got 15 years in prison for DOSing his previous employer and a few other people. And they really prosecuted him very vigorously, obviously, with a 15-year sentence. But as I researched the story, I realized um, that there's been quite a few other um, prosecutions and convictions lately. Uh, this is particularly interesting to me because my responsibility is, is the technology that we use inside the AT&T network to defend against DDoS attacks. And we have seen a reduction in the number of attacks that we're seeing, especially after the web stressor um, arrest that, that occurred about a month ago. I'm hoping that this is a trend and that law enforcement continues and uh, it's going to help us in our daily defenses against uh, the bad guys. Yeah, that's, that's interesting because this one is a little bit different. I think you started off by saying that this is someone who is actually attacking people. This isn't someone providing a stressor service, a booter. No. This is someone who was the, the finger on the button for it. And I think that is a little bit different because usually what we see is you know, law enforcement will go after the stressor because it's easier to take down the person running the infrastructure than it is to go after the, the individuals who will use that infrastructure. And there's, there's probably many, many more users than there are services. I think it means that there may be more prosecutions of folks who are the users of these services. So uh, hopefully that will discourage folks in the future. And that means that those people who have to defend against DDoS attacks, it makes their life a whole lot easier. Actually, I just pulled out some um, uh, some statistics. In the web stressor, um, there were 136,000 users that were identified as a web stressor. And actually, one of them that they said was this young 18-year-old guy in Amsterdam has just been also been prosecuted for attacking some big banks in the Netherlands. And uh, there was also another case I just read recently, only a couple of months ago, for a guy, again, the perpetrator of the DDoS attack for um, dossing the city of Akron, Ohio. So I think what we're seeing is, is the willingness from law enforcement to really go after the users and the perpetrators of these DDoS attacks, which I think is, is a really positive move. Obviously, the law enforcement tools are, are getting better, that they can actually find these people who are actually using these uh, tools and, uh, and prosecuting them. So, so yeah, I've seen, I don't know if it was in this particular case, but I've seen in cases when they take down these DDoS for higher providers, they're able to use their databases to then track down, again, these users. Uh, so that may dissuade people sometimes uh, from maybe using these, these services. Uh, if they, can, uh, they can be tracked down eventually when they, they're taken down and we're seeing more of a trend of them being taken down now. I've also seen that in, in many cases, um, part of the thing that leads to the takedown of one of these, these stressor sites is where the user list actually gets exposed. And having your name or your email address listed there as one of the users is certainly uh, I bet, it's, I bet it's a sort of a shock to the system of the people who thought that they could get away with it and no one would ever know that they were a customer, so. Yeah, that's a really good point. So I just thought it was really interesting that for years and years, even in conversations that, you know, for those of us in the security area, we do talk to law enforcement from time to time, and sometimes it's hard to get their attention or their, their desire to kind of make these efforts on very difficult cases sometimes to prove. But I think it's a, it's a great trend that they're really putting the resources into stopping this. Well, I think really uh, to defend against the DDoS attack against you, um, you really need to work with your network service provider, whether that's AT&T or another carrier, because in reality, you're never going to be able to have enough horsepower on your own uh, customer premise to be able to fight an attack. Now, on the other side, there's a lot of people who participate in DDoS attacks. So from that perspective, what I would recommend for everyone is that you always keep your, your devices up to the latest patch versions and you don't have a kind of admin or password 123 as your standard password. That's how they all get taken over and they become weapons and they're attacking other people.